another uh, another episode in the uh, continuing saga of life in the time of the coronavirus epidemic. For a long time, I've watched hiking and camping videos. These are people who mostly go alone and far away from others. They put the oomph in social distancing. They like the challenge of being out in extremely inclement weather. They know how to take care of themselves. They're very resourceful and they have good tools and equipment. They stand in sharp contrast, for me anyway, to the clash and clamor of the hugely interconnected, completely dependent rest of the world. The lady doctor has a new position, special consultant to the governor. Today she said farewell in her soft-spoken, ultra-sincere way. I was unable to listen to it. The field mouse clearly respects the hell out of her. When the two of them refer to each other, they both invoke the word passion. They both have great passion. I sure wish we did not have a passionate governor, much less one backed by a passionate health director. Passion means being overwhelmed by your emotions, no longer able to control them. I would prefer a leader with a measure of control. But instead, I got the field mouse. He is proud of his passion. I suffer because of it. In this strange time, I find myself looking about, apprehensive, waiting for the next event to arrive. It seems inevitable, even if it's minor, it might be enough for everything to collapse. If the camel is loaded and overloaded, it is perfectly true that even a tiny straw could be enough to crush the beast. I mean, seriously, how much can we bear? I feel we are very close to a snapping point, and precious few people are like those campers, capable of navigating in chaos. Major League Baseball continues to make a fool of itself. It's like hearing two old men argue over a dime. Here's my pre- I, I mean model. They're so stupid or greedy that they might not play at all. If they do come to an agreement and start playing, several members of a team will test positive for the virus and that will eliminate that team. This will happen again and again until the whole shebang gives it up and they cancel the season. If they return the following year, it will be to diminished enthusiasm, small crowds, great for social distancing. The TV money will start drying up, and baseball will begin its long walk into the sunset. Golly, this modeling sure is fun. No wonder they do it. And when you're wrong, nobody cares. They don't remember your model. And besides, the models are almost always wrong anyway. Things are getting worse. Unemployment numbers continue to rise. The virus numbers continue to rise. They're blaming this on Mother's Day and the protests. And the protests have taken, not surprisingly, a potentially dangerous turn. Could this be the tiny straw? People calling themselves the Nation of Chaz have cordoned off a six-block section of Seattle, including a police precinct station. They are armed, and they say they're not leaving until their demands are met. Their demands include the total elimination of the current criminal justice system, the police, the courts, and the prisons. All money going to any of those entities will cease, including pensions. There are many more demands. The mayor of Seattle, a lady, reportedly said that this can be seen as a summer of love. The governor of Washington said that he has not heard anything about it, and so he has no comment. And the trumpet, naturally, has reportedly said 
that they've got 72 hours to figure it all out. And if not, if they don't, then he'll come in with troops and restore law and order. That would be a disaster. These Chaz people would be seen as heroes. Their cause would be elevated even higher and the military force would be viewed as jackbooted thugs, no better than stormtroopers, enforcing the will of an oppressive, tyrannical, wealthy, old, white man. It would mark the beginning of an all-out race war, and a war is a terrible, costly struggle with no winners. It's a dire scenario, another model, I guess. I hope it's wrong. It has to be avoided.